scientists have made an exciting discovery on the seafloor along the Cascadia subduction zone. That's the same zone that could someday give Western Washington the big one, a 9.0 earthquake. Brace yourself. NASA's latest discovery has unveiled something truly terrifying beneath the Pacific Northwest. A newly released map of the Cascadia Megafault reveals shocking details that could spell disaster for millions. What did NASA find? And how could it change everything we know about this looming seismic threat? In a groundbreaking new study, NASA has revealed startling findings after mapping the Cascadia Megafault, a region capable of producing one of the most powerful earthquakes on Earth. This fault line, stretching from Northern California to Canada, could unleash devastating tsunamis and catastrophic quakes, and the new data is more alarming than ever. Today, we dive into NASA's terrifying discovery and what it could mean for the Pacific Northwest. Are we prepared for what lies beneath? The Cascadia subduction zone stretches for over 560 miles, 900 kilometers, marking the boundary between the continental North American plate and the oceanic plates, Juan de Fuca, Explorer, and Gorda. These oceanic plates are steadily plunging beneath North America at a rate of 1.2 to 1.6 inches, 30 to 42 millimeters, per year. The new data shows that the interaction between these plates is far more complex than previously thought, particularly in the large segment stretching from southern Washington to southern Vancouver Island. This region has become a focal point for researchers due to its unique geometry. The plates converge at a flat, shallow angle, increasing the contact area between the two tectonic plates. This area is now believed to be the most likely site for the next major earthquake. According to geophysicist Suzanne Carbot, the size of an earthquake is directly related to the size of the area that ruptures, making this segment of the Cascadia Fault a critical area to monitor. The Cascadia subduction zone last generated a major earthquake on January 26, 1700. Though no written records exist, scientists have pieced together evidence from drowned coastal forests and a tsunami recorded in Japan. It is believed that a magnitude 8.7 to 9.2 earthquake shook the Pacific Northwest on that day, causing massive destruction along the coast. What remains unclear is whether the 1700 quake was caused by the entire fault rupturing, or if only one segment of the fault was involved. This is where the updated map of the fault's geometry offers crucial new insights. By better understanding the segmentation of the fault, researchers can now make more informed predictions about where the next earthquake will likely strike and how strong it will be. The newly mapped data, collected from modern seismic imaging techniques, shows that the fault is split into four major segments. The first segment stretches from Northern California to Cape Blanco, Oregon. The next extends northward to Alsea Bay, Oregon, where researchers observed significant slip, movement of the tectonic plates against one another. The third segment runs from Alsea Bay to the mouth of the Columbia River, and the final segment extends northward into southern Washington and southern Vancouver Island. One of the most concerning aspects of the new data is the revelation that the oceanic plates subducting beneath North America are also breaking apart as they dive down. This indicates that the fault's geometry is far more complicated than previously understood. The discovery of these fault fractures could lead to more erratic earthquake patterns and unexpected seismic behavior. The fault surface is much more complex in its geometry than the picture we had from that very old data, said Carbot. These complexities make it difficult to predict exactly how and when the fault will rupture again. However, the segmentation of the fault into distinct regions allows scientists to create more refined hazard maps, which can inform both emergency preparedness plans and future infrastructure development in the region. The Impact of Megathrust Earthquakes When a large section of the Cascadia Fault ruptures, the energy released causes violent shaking across a wide region. The shaking intensity would vary based on factors like distance from the fault and the nature of the underlying geology. Coastal cities in Oregon and Washington would experience intense ground motion, with shaking potentially lasting several minutes. Buildings, bridges, and other infrastructure, particularly those not built to withstand such forces, would be at risk of collapse or severe damage. Inland areas like Seattle and Portland, though further from the fault, are built on soft soils that can amplify seismic waves, leading to prolonged and intense shaking. 
This increases the risk of liquefaction, where saturated soils lose their strength and behave like a liquid, causing buildings to sink or tilt. Studies have shown that areas around Seattle are particularly vulnerable to liquefaction, which would add to the destruction caused by the earthquake itself. The shaking from a Cascadia megathrust event could also trigger landslides across the region, especially in areas of steep terrain like the Cascade Mountains. These landslides could block roads, cut off communities, and further complicate disaster response efforts. Tsunami Risks of the Cascadia Megafault Perhaps the greatest threat from a Cascadia megathrust earthquake is the tsunami it would generate. When the tectonic plates locked along the fault suddenly slip, the ocean floor rapidly deforms, displacing a massive volume of water. This displacement generates a series of tsunami waves that can travel across the Pacific Ocean at speeds of up to 500 miles per hour. Tsunami Devastation Along the coast, communities along the Pacific Northwest coastline would have only minutes of warning before the first tsunami waves arrived. Low-lying coastal towns like Cannon Beach, Seaside, and ocean shores in Oregon and Washington could be hit with waves over 30 feet, 9 meters high. The force of the water would cause widespread flooding, destruction of buildings, and loss of life. Coastal areas with inadequate evacuation routes, particularly those reliant on bridges or single highways, would be especially vulnerable. Historical records show that the 1700 earthquake sent tsunami waves across the Pacific Ocean, reaching as far as Japan. In a modern context, coastal warning systems would likely alert areas across the Pacific, including Hawaii and Japan, giving them hours to prepare. However, the local population along the US and Canadian coasts would have far less time, emphasizing the importance of immediate evacuation procedures. The tsunami would also have lasting effects on infrastructure and the environment. Ports, marinas, and coastal industries would face catastrophic damage, disrupting trade and economic activities for months or even years. Saltwater inundation would ruin freshwater supplies, agricultural land, and coastal ecosystems, creating long-term challenges for recovery. However, let's go deeper into the mechanism and progress of rupture over the years. At the core of the Cascadia subduction zone's mechanics is the process of plate tectonics. The Juan de Fuca, Gorda, and Explorer plates are oceanic plates, meaning they are composed of dense basaltic rock that forms at mid-ocean ridges. As these plates move eastward, they meet the thicker and less dense continental crust of the North American plate. This interaction results in the oceanic plates being pulled, or subducted, beneath the North American plate at a rate of about 1.2 to 1.6 inches per year. This subduction causes tensional stress to build up at the interface between the two plates. Since the plates do not smoothly slide past each other, they become stuck in places, creating locked sections along the fault. Over time, as stress accumulates, the plates will eventually rupture, releasing stored energy in the form of a megathrust earthquake. The mechanism of rupture is governed by the following key factors, plate convergence. As the oceanic plates dive beneath the North American plate, the tectonic boundary accumulates strain. When this strain exceeds the strength of the rocks at the fault, they break, causing a sudden release of energy. Locked zones. Portions of the fault remain locked for extended periods, preventing slip. The longer these zones remain locked, the more strain accumulates. When they finally rupture, the result can be catastrophic, releasing the accumulated energy in the form of large earthquakes. Paleoseismological records suggest that such ruptures occur roughly every 300 to 600 years. Segments of the fault. The fault is segmented into different sections, each of which behaves slightly differently. For instance, the northern segment from southern Washington to Vancouver Island is thought to have a shallow angle of subduction, meaning a larger area of contact between the plates and thus a higher potential for a large earthquake. The southern sections exhibit more frequent slow-slip events, which help release some stress but do not preclude the possibility of a larger event. Historical Progress of Rupture The Cascadia subduction zone has a long history of earthquakes, with the most significant recorded event occurring on January 26, 1700. This earthquake, estimated to be between magnitude 8.7 and 9.2, 
was so large that it generated a massive tsunami that reached the shores of Japan. Geological evidence, including drowned forests and coastal marsh deposits, has helped scientists piece together the timeline of major past events. These records indicate that full or partial ruptures of the Cascadia Fault have occurred roughly every 300 to 600 years. The 1700 Cascadia Earthquake The 1700 event is the most well-known rupture of the CSZ and serves as a benchmark for understanding the potential future risks. While there are no written records from North America, oral histories from indigenous communities, combined with the tsunami record in Japan, provide evidence of the earthquake's magnitude and impact. The tsunami generated by the event was so large that it caused damage in Japan, thousands of miles away from its source. Segment-specific activity. The Cascadia Fault is broken up into four main segments. Northern segment. Stretching from southern Vancouver Island to southern Washington, this segment has a shallow angle of subduction, which makes it capable of producing the largest earthquakes. Central segment. Extends from southern Washington to northern Oregon. It is a highly stressed region and may contribute to the rupture during the next major event. Southern segment. From northern Oregon to northern California, this segment has shown evidence of slow slip events, where stress is gradually released without producing large quakes. However, this does not diminish the potential for a megathrust event. Southernmost segment extends into northern California and is the most tectonically active part of the zone, characterized by frequent smaller earthquakes and more frequent rupture events. Slow slip and tremor events. In recent years, Scientists have observed a phenomenon known as slow-slip events, SSEs. These events occur when portions of the fault slowly slip without causing a noticeable earthquake. Slow-slip events can last days or weeks and have been detected every 14 months or so in the Cascadia region. Despite their slow nature, SSEs may contribute to the buildup of stress in adjacent areas of the fault, potentially triggering a larger rupture. While SSEs release some of the strain along the fault, they do not prevent megathrust earthquakes. In fact, the relationship between SSEs and larger ruptures is still not fully understood. Scientists continue to monitor these events closely as they may serve as a precursor to a more significant earthquake. Given the immense risks posed by both shaking and tsunami hazards from the Cascadia Fault, preparedness is critical. Current building codes in the Pacific Northwest have been updated to incorporate seismic-resistant design, but much of the older infrastructure remains vulnerable. Retrofitting bridges, hospitals, and schools to withstand a large earthquake is an ongoing process. Equally important are community education and evacuation planning, especially in coastal areas. Tsunami warning systems, such as sirens and automated alerts, are essential, but must be accompanied by public awareness campaigns to ensure residents know how to respond. The concept of drop, cover, and hold on during an earthquake, followed by immediate evacuation to higher ground in the event of a tsunami, is a message that needs constant reinforcement. For inland cities like Seattle, ensuring preparedness for sustained shaking is critical. Building designs, early warning systems, and public preparedness programs can save lives, but more investment in infrastructure retrofitting is necessary to mitigate damage. The Cascadia subduction zone presents a dual seismic hazard for the Pacific Northwest, with risks of both massive earthquakes and devastating tsunamis. The complexity of the fault system, combined with its proximity to densely populated regions, makes it one of the most dangerous seismic zones in North America. While scientific understanding of the fault has improved, more needs to be done to prepare for the inevitable earthquake and tsunami that will follow when the Cascadia megafault ruptures again. Preparedness, early warning systems, and infrastructure resilience will be key in minimizing the loss of life and property when that day comes. The risks are high, but through informed actions and improved readiness, the region can mitigate the potential devastation of the next Cascadia megathrust event. As we've seen, the new map of the Cascadia megafault has revealed both fascinating and terrifying details about the region's seismic activity. From the risk of a megathrust earthquake to the looming threat of tsunamis, it's clear that this discovery raises urgent questions about how prepared we are for what lies ahead. Understanding the mechanics of the fault is key, but there's still much we don't know. 
If you found this information valuable, make sure to stay tuned for more updates as scientists continue to study this complex geological feature. Remember, knowledge is the first step towards preparedness. Stay informed, stay ready, and don't forget to subscribe for more insights on the latest discoveries shaping our world.